will be with you. Orion News Talk, news and views beyond the mainstream media. Imagine a world with natural clouds, clean air, clean water, and natural food. Why in the world are they spraying? If you love your family, if you love your children, if you love our planet, it's time to get involved. In 2010, millions of people were awakened to the question of what. Now the next question that remains to be answered is, why in the world are they spraying? An investigative look into one of the many agendas associated with chemtrail geoengineering programs, weather control. Why has our weather been changing? Are the long white lines in the sky changing our weather? Could there be a monetary and political agenda behind these damaging programs? Why in the world are they spraying? Order your copy today at www.whyintheworldarethespraying.com. Why in the world are they spraying? And if you control the weather, you're going to control the planet. It's that simple. And it is that while the lethality, the lethality of their power is greater than ever, their capacity to impose control over the politically awakened masses of the world is at a historical low. Namely, in earlier times, it was easier to control a million people, literally. It was easier to control a million people than physically to kill a million people. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million people. The smoke in the air of our Concord bridges and Pearl Harbors is always smelled first by the farmers who come from their simple homes to find the fire and fight. But if you embark on instituting a society where government protects you from yourself, you're in big trouble, and that's what they're doing. That's all government is, is force. I mean, do you have a choice about paying Medicare taxes? government uses force to mold behavior or mold the economy they've overstepped the bounds and they violated the whole concept of our revolution and our constitution welcome everybody to the monday edition of the freedom link here on the orion talk radio network i'm joe joseph along with my good friends tim watts and john king and tonight we're going to talk about the massacre in newtown connecticut and i'll tell you what uh emotions are flaring right now they're flying high and tonight we're going to talk about what this could mean for America, because there's a lot of talk today and in the past couple of days about wanting to take the guns away or assault weapons bans. We've heard it all talked about. We've seen the vilification of guns on the mainstream media. As a matter of fact, just tonight I watched a, a very sickening piece by Wolf Blitzer on CNN and they were talking to a shop owner about the AR-15 and everything like that. You could tell that the, it was nice and cut up. And, and I'm sure the shop owner right now is probably stomping up and down mad as hell because uh, he was played by the mainstream media. But we need to talk about the issues tonight regarding this type of mentality and what it could mean. I mean, there's some very devastating consequences ahead if – our non-representing representatives follow the track I think they're going to follow. So, guys, let's uh, let's get into it. You know, the the first thing that's troubling right now is in the aftermath of this shooting, and it was sick and horrific, and no one likes to see children shot or anybody shot for that matter or murdered. But uh, Senator Mark Warner of Virginia and Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia. Two people with A ratings from the NRA have openly called for an assault weapons ban. And that's simply because um, the shooter used, allegedly used an AR-15. And you have to understand the, what these are. This is not an assault weapon. An assault weapon, by definition, is an automatic weapon. What an AR-15 is is a civilian model of the M-16. It's a semi-automatic weapon. Now, what does that mean? That means one shot, one pull of the trigger, one bullet. That's what that is. And they say, well, you know, the high-capacity magazine, blah, 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 blah. If you don't know what you're doing with a gun, 
it doesn't matter how many capacity magazines you have. You have to be good at it. You have to be proficient at it. You can't just pick up a gun and be anywhere near accurate. Oh, I mean, there is a chance that you'll hit your target, but you won't do it with any sort of consistency, that's for sure. So we'll dive into that too. Guys, prohibition. Let's take a look at history and, and, and just see how many times in our history, Tim, has prohibition worked? <laughs> well, let me see. Let me count on, um, uh, see, there would be, um, um, yeah, okay, how about zero? Right. And, of course, what is this right here? When you start, first of all, let's back this up a second. The Second Amendment is a constitutional right. The only way that you get rid of the Second Amendment is through a constitutional amendment, which needs to be passed by Congress and ratified by 75% of the states. I don't think so. Number one, I don't think that's going to happen. But, but, Obama, through executive fiat, can do a lot of things to make it harder for you to buy things. He can institute background checks. He can, in, he can tell the DEA, look, this is what you have to do. Or the... Uh, the ATF, this is what you have to do. He can lay out procedures within the departments, but that's fine. You still cannot take – there's no piece of legislation and no person that can take your rights away. You have to give them up. Okay, now in the case of alcohol, let's take a look. Alcohol was, was banned in this country in the 20s and the 30s. How'd that work out for us? Well, let's see. Crime went through the roof. You had poison being sold on the streets because people did not distill the bootleg uh, moonshine right. So they were making methanol that was poisoning people. How about marijuana? How did that work out for everybody? Can you still get it today? You see, prohibition doesn't work. And the only thing that prohibition does is it keeps the guns out of the hands of law-abiding citizens, while criminals really don't give a crap about the law. Ain't that right, John King? That's exactly right. Another thing prohibition does is it makes the price higher. That's right. It does. It drives up the price. Now, we have this going on, and let me say this before we start. I'm going to give you two scenarios tonight, okay? Now, this, my wife and I have been talking, and, you know, this could have the potential to be the thing that takes society in the United States and throws it into civil war or chaos because there are too many gun owners out there that will not give up their weapons. They will not give up their weapons. And I can't say I blame them because these cannot be taken away. What are they going to do? Is it going to be like the gold confiscation executive order of 1933? Turn in your gold, and we'll give you Federal Reserve notes in exchange. John, you said it best tonight before the broadcast. What price do you put on your freedom? You can't put any price on your freedom. Uh, if you go to turn your guns in for $10 trillion, uh, you just can't put a price on your freedom. Well, it, it, actually, the, the, the question was, what price do you put on your gun? And if the government comes and takes your guns away, are they going to give you fair market value for your gun? To which response uh, John gave? You can't put a price on your gun because that gun equals freedom. And when you sell your gun, you've sold your freedom. That Second Amendment is the guarantee to all the others that is given to you uh, in, in that Constitution. Without that Second Amendment... You're not going to have your freedom of speech. You don't have your freedom of speech now, people. you got free, uh, free speech zones. You've got constitution-free zones out there. And, oh, by the way, the Patriot Act isn't for you. It's for the terrorists. Well, guess who the terrorists are now, people? And they want your guns. That's so right. let's, uh, let's go and uh, shoot up a school full of kids and get everybody's ass in a rage and ban these guns because we, you, you do want to protect the children, don't you, Mr. King? 
Yes, I do. But I also want to protect myself from a tyrannical government. And for those people out there that say, oh, well, that was written back when they had one shot muskets. Well, guess what? So did the Redcoats and so did the state. But now the state has state has uh, fully automatic weapons. So it's it. So to protect me from a tyrannical government and everyone else, it should be equal straight across the board. No assault weapons ban. What part of shall not be abridged don't these freaking morons understand yeah and this right shall not be infringed you're absolutely right john now what's interesting is is around the same time that the newtown connecticut shooting happened there was a shooting in oregon what you didn't hear about that you don't know what's going on in oregon why an oregon mall shooter was stopped by what do you know an armed citizen unbelievable why isn't this getting play in the mainstream media. While reports of Tuesday's shooting at the uh, Clackamas Town Center Mall in Oregon dominated the national media until Friday's horrific shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut, one very important detail has been repeatedly and intentionally left out of the mainstream media's coverage. The shooter, Jacob Tyler Roberts, was confronted with an armed citizen, at which time he ran away and shot himself. By the time police arrived on the scene, Roberts was already dead. That armed man was 22-year-old Nick Melly, who was at the mall shopping with a young woman who was babysitting her friend's baby. And this is right from him. He says, I heard three shots and turned around, turned and looked and, at, at Casey and said, are you serious, he said. The friend and baby hit the floor. Melly, who has a concealed carry permit, positioned himself behind a pillar. He was working on his rifle, said Melly. He kept pulling the charge handle and hitting the side. The break in gunfire allowed Melly to pull out his own gun, but he never took his eyes off the shooter. Quote, as I was down to pull, as I was going down to pull, I saw someone in the back of the Charlotte move, and I knew if I fired and missed, I could hit them. Melly took cover inside a nearby store. He never pulled the tri trigger. He stands by that decision. Quote, I'm not beating myself up because I didn't shoot him, said Melly. I know after he saw me, I think the last shot he fired was the one he used on himself. The gunman was dead, but not before taking two innocent lives and him and taking the innocent lie, the innocence of everyone else. But it could have been so much worse had it not been for the actions of a concealed carry uh, permit holder and somebody that had a, a gun in that mall at that time. But you won't hear that because that doesn't fit the narrative. So, folks... You have to understand and pay attention to what's going on here. Now, this is just one thing that's happening right now. There's a lot of things that are happening right now in parallel with this. But this is, this is huge. Now, the Supreme Court is going to be ruling on the um, – the Supreme Court is going to be re, uh, ruling on a, a different uh, case, another gun case, conveniently, and it's going to be here soon – that deals with carrying weapons. In this case, open carry. They're going to be dealing with that. So pay attention to that. I wonder if they're going to be biased about that now. Very interesting. And uh, John, you brought up a, a, a great piece today about uh, the deadliest school massacre in history, which is in Sandy Hook. Uh, yes, Joe. Uh, the deadliest school massacre in U.S. history was actually in 1927. Why does this matter now? Well, let me explain. In the end of this, there were 38 children dead at the school and two teachers and four other adults. I'm not talking about the horrific shooting in Connecticut. What I'm talking about is the worst school murder in American history. It took place in Michigan in 1927. A school board official was enraged at the tax increase to fund the school construction. He quietly planted explosives in the Bath Township Elementary. Then the day he was finally ready, he set it off an inferno. When crowds rushed to the rescue of the children, he drove up in his shrapnel-filled car and detonated that too, killing even more people, including himself. And then something we'd find very strange today happened. Nothing. No cameras were placed at the front of the schools. No guards were started uh, making visitors show identification. No zero tolerance laws were passed, nor any background checks required by the PTA. Nothing. 
Very they didn't have the agenda back then. They didn't no. have that agenda that they have now. No, because it wouldn't have even been entertained at that point. You know, but again, again, what we have here is a lot of things moving in parallel. I want to move forward. At the same time, this uh, movement is underway because, of course, they're capitalizing on this now to restrict your Second Amendment rights. And again, you have to give those away. So I, and I cannot say that enough. You have to willingly give your right away. The fiscal cliff, quote unquote, is coming up. And there's a lot of preparations underway, you know, not just by preppers and by people that listen to this broadcast or responsible, critical thinking adults, but also the government. Now, what could they possibly be doing to prepare for a fiscal cliff? Well, understand this. When the fiscal cliff goes down, and I'm going to use the Department of Defense as an example, it's roughly $550 billion or so that's appropriated for fiscal year 2013. Now, if the fiscal cliff sequestration actually happens and occurs, $106 billion of that $550 billion is cut. Now, that's not the only thing that's cut. I'm using Department of Defense only right now. So as it stands right now, within the Department of Defense, they are kind of holding things back a little bit, you know, in anticipation that the budget will be cut by roughly 20%. Now, what does that mean? That means that there's a very good possibility that you're going to have a lot of federal employees being furloughed. Now, what does that mean to everybody else? That means you're going to have a big increase in the amount of unemployed people. You're also going to have people that now who could afford their mortgages because federal employees tend to make better money than most, especially in these days. Um, they're not going to be able to afford their mortgages. You're going to have an increase in foreclosures. And at the same time that the fiscal cliff is going on, uh, you're going to have Wall Street, before this happens, Wall Street is going to start selling off their stuff to avoid the increase in capital gains tax. Capital gains tax is, of course, a tax on uh, anything that you sell that's of a certain value or higher than a certain value, and it ends up being very, very expensive. So you're going to have big sell-offs, and you're going to have big um, <clears throat> payouts, and then nothing. Now, also in the government, they're talking about furloughing um, very personnel-heavy, uh, uh, you know, departments that are very personnel-heavy, such as the FBI and the TSA. So you're also going to have, I mean, you're going to have people from all branches of government if this goes through. Okay, then we get to insurance care. You may know it by Obamacare, but we call it insurance care at the Freedom Link because it's the insurance companies that wrote this. And it's the insurance company that benefit the most. Isn't that right, Tim? Absolutely. Good for you, Joey. That's exactly what it is. Because, folks, it didn't matter if Obama came in or if McCain came in. It would be McCain care, Obamacare. To, be call, to call it by another name, is that takes, the, uh, that takes the heat off the people who are actually behind it and the ones who profit from this. Because H.R. 658 was out long ago before insurance care came around. In H.R. 658, what that bill did, it scared the hell out of the insurance companies because they weren't going to profit anymore. And again, it was out for years. But once the insurance industry saw that thing start to gain steam on both sides of the aisle, they said, oh, oh, oh hell no, you ain't doing that. So they started this whole insurance fiasco. And it is in now under this present administration. But again, if McCain was in, it would be McCain care. So, Joey, kudos to you for rightfully calling it what it is. It's insurance care. They've massaged the name, folks, so that you think it's, you know, all against Obama or it's a political thing. It is not. This is from the insurance industry. It is insurance care. That's right. Now, let's take this a step further, okay? So insurance care is being implemented, of course. It's been for the last couple of years, and in 2014 it takes effect. But some very interesting things are happening on January 1st, 2013, including some uh, mandates to provide 
health care for full-time employees, and big tax increases. We have two years of big tax increases coming up. The first one starting January 1st, 2013. That's when you're going to see the Social Security withholdings increase back to its normal level. The Social Security uh, withholding holiday, if you will, is coming to a close, and people are going to end up seeing, twenty, on average, 20 to $40 more pay period withdrew from their paycheck to pay for Social Security. You're also going to see the rollback of the Bush-era tax cuts. Now, right now, they're talking about making it applicable to people $250,000 a year and more. However, if nothing is resolved, those tax cuts go away for everybody, which means a ginormous, gigantic middle-class tax increase. And then, of course, you have the mandate for employers to provide health care to their full-time employees. So what you're going to have on top of this is you're going to have employers that will now refuse to hire full-time people. And full-time, according to insurance care, is people that work 30 hours a week or more. So what is that going to do to the economy? That is going to be the big question. So right there, based on this fiscal cliff and the fact that even if they come to some sort of agreement, you have to understand that an agreement's going to come with what? Entitlement cuts, social programs, all of these things that are what? Going to piss people off. Yeah. A lot. It's going to piss people off a lot. Why? They're not going to be able to defend for themselves. Remember, look at the massive amount of people that are on food stamps and that are on welfare and that are on Medicaid. And that are on Medicare. Yeah. And, and those, ra- those are going to get cut? You have over what 50 you- million people. F- over 50 million people on food stamps alone. That's incredible. And let me that's real right. quick correct something here, Joe. I think I sure. ac- accidentally said HR 658, and that's because I got you know drones on the brain tonight because we're going to talk about that too. It wasn't HR 658; it was HR 676. That was the uh, the bill that was going to uh, neuter the uh, insurance industry from the uh, from the health care uh, issues. Yes. HR 676. That was the bill. Oh, that's right. 658 is the drone bill. That's right. That is the drone bill. We'll talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So again, you know, so. Like I said, even if they do something to avert this fiscal cliff, they're not really averting it. You see, because one way, shape, or form, we're going to have to start paying the piper. So it's either going to be, okay, you know, and right now this is, this is uh, Congressman Boehner's um, proposal to Obama, is that, yes, you know, we'll, we'll go with a tax increase for people making over a million dollars. And uh, also... Any rise in the debt ceiling has to be accompanied by an equal amount of cuts. Seems uh, fair and responsible. But the interesting thing about that is, what are they going to cut? It's going to have to come out of social programs, too. I mean, because they will not cut the military any more than they already did. So where is the rest going to come from? That's going to be the question. And how many people are going to be pissed off? And then you wonder why they want to take your guns away? Is it really to make you safer or is it to make them safer? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Folks, we're going to break. When we come back, we'll have the King's Court and we'll continue our conversation on the uh, <laughs> attempt to usurp the Second Amendment. We'll be right back after these messages. Following the Freedom Link, down the rabbit hole, takes to the airwaves, and it's a three hour special tonight. Popeye did a great job interviewing Fritz Springmeier, and he's going to have him on for three hours tonight, starting at 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Orion Talk Radio Network. Joe Joseph, Tim Watts, and John King here. We're talking about the the Second Amendment. We're talking about uh, the government and how it looks like they're going to use this as the catalyst to take your rights away. And let's, let's not even say the government. Because it's really not the government that's doing it. This elitist cabal at the top wants to take your guns away. Why? Not to protect you. It's to protect them. And before we get back into the conversation, I'd like to call the King's Court into session. So, John King, take it away. 
Guys, I got this email I wanted to read tonight, and then I'll explain to you why I read it. Alan Simpson, the senator from Wyoming, calls senior citizens the greediest generation as he compared Social Security to a milk cow with 310 million teats. Here's a response letter from Ms. Patty Myers in Montana. I think she's a little ticked off, and she tells it like it is. And I'm going to read this verbatim. Hey, Alan, let's get a few things straight. As a career politician, you have been on the public dole for 50 years. I have been paying Social Security taxes for 48 years since I've been 15. I'm now 63. My Social Security payments and those of millions of other Americans were safely tucked away in an interest bearing account for decades until you political pukes decided to raid the account and give our money to a bunch of zero losers in return for votes, thus bankrupting the system and turning Social Security into a Ponzi scheme that would make Bertie Madoff proud. Recently, just like Lucy and Charlie Brown, you pulled your ilk and the proverbial football away from millions of American seniors nearing retirement and moved the goalposts for full retirement from 65 to 67. And now you and your show commission are proposing to move the goalposts yet again. I and millions of other Americans have been paying into Medicare from day one. And now you morons propose to change the rules of the game. Why? Because you idiots mismanaged other parts of the economy to such an extent that you need to steal our money from Medicare to pay the bills. I and millions of other Americans have been paying income taxes our entire lives, and now you propose to increase our taxes yet again. Why? Because your incompetent bastards spent our money so proficiently that you just kept on spending even after you ran out of money. Now, come to the American taxpayers and say you need more money to pay off your debt. To add insult to injury, you label us greedy for calling bullshit on your incompetence. Well, Captain Bullshit, here are a few questions for you. How much money have you earned from your from the American taxpayers during your pathetic 50-year political career? At what age did you retire from your pathetic? pathetic political career and how much are you receiving in an annual retirement benefits from the American taxpayer? How much do you pay for your government provided health insurance? What cuts in your retirement and health care benefits are you proposing in your discussing deficit reduction proposal or as usual have you exempted yourself and your political cronies? As is you, Captain Bullshit, and your political co-conspirators called Congress, who are the greedy ones. It is you and your fellow nutcase thieves who have bankrupted America and stolen the American dream for millions of loyal patriotic taxpayers. And for what? Votes and your job and retirement security at our expense. You lunk-headed leech. That's right, sir. You and... Yours have bankrupted America for for the sole purpose of advancing your pathetic political careers, and you know it. We know it, and now you know we know it. And you can take that to the bank, you miserable son of a bitch. No, I didn't stutter. P.S. Stop calling Social Security benefits entitlements. What an insult. I have been paying into the Social Security system for 45 years. It's my money. Give it back to me the way the system was designed and stop patting yourself on the back like you're being generous by doling out these monthly checks. Ladies and gentlemen, this woman had passion. She wrote to uh, her representative, and I'm telling you now, we need the same passion that she has. We need to stand up, and we need to write our representatives, our congressmen, and our senators, and we need to tell them, we are voting Americans, and we stand behind the Second Amendment. You don't have to tell them what you have. Just tell them that you support the Second Amendment, and let them know that if they screw with it, they'll be out of a job. Joe, back to you. Thank you, John King. And, you know, that's a very important point. As a matter of fact, Tim, you make that point uh, quite often, but, you know, the mistake that they call it an entitlement, but really it's a benefit that you pay into. That's right. We've paid into it, you know, ever since you start working when you're a little kid. And, and again, the woman makes a great point and kudos to her for actually taking the time and the effort to write her congressman and to let them know how she felt about this. They're the ones that have taken the money out of this. This is a trust set aside for us, yet they constantly borrow from it year, over and over and over, year after year after year, both sides of the aisle. Absolutely right. Now, uh, you know, guys, I was talking about the tax increases and... 
how the economy, even if they come to some sort of agreement with this fiscal cliff, it's not going to avert a, an economic downturn. It, it can't. And I'm going to explain why. OK, right now, if nothing happens, if nothing happens, the uh, taxes are set to go up now. Let me tell you what taxes are going up. In 2013, people making up to $35,350 will see a 5% increase in their income tax from 10 to 15%. If you go from 35 to 85, you go up 3%, 25 to 28. 85 to 178,000, 28 to 31, and so on and so forth, with the top income tax bracket topping out at 39.6% from 35%. But that's not all. You have no more payroll tax holiday. So before 2011, when it was implemented, or 2010 when it was implemented, um, it was 6.2%. And then the payroll tax holiday went into effect, and it dropped 2% off of that to 42 Well, that's coming now out of your paycheck, an extra 2%, or it's rolling back to the way it was. But that's not all, because the estate tax is going up very much. Now, there was an exempt uh, in 2012 the exemption, estate tax exemption was 5.12 million dollars. That was exempt from the estate tax. And the tax rate of the estate tax was 35%. In 2013, the estate tax exemption is now 1 million dollars with an estate tax rate of 55%. And then we go on. It says Alternative minimum tax increase. Now, this, this is huge because this is going to bring uh, tax rates up for Americans as well if this is not resolved. The AMT, the alternate minimum tax, is the most confusing of taxes and the most bungled in Congress. The deductions are the AMT was meant to stop the extremely wealthy from using large tax deductions to avoid paying taxes. The AMT is not remarkably indexed for inflation. That means two things. One, any increases in the exemption amount have to be approved by Congress every single time. And two, tweaks in the tax code, like the tax cuts, are essentially meaningless to those subject to the AMT. What Congress has done to fix this is to put a Band-Aid on the problem, referring to as a, referred to as a patch every year. Basically, the exemption is boosted. Without the boost, more folks are subject to the alternative minimum tax. And by more, and by more folks, I mean 20 million Americans. And I'm not kidding about that number. At least 27 million taxpayers will be subject to the alternative minimum tax in 2013 if nothing happens. Uh, and that, my friends, again takes away their ability to deduct things. It makes exemptions very difficult. But that's not all. Because we have the capital gains increase that goes from 15% to 20%. So you see, folks, there are an extraordinary number of um, people now that are going to be subject to increased taxes. And all this, Tim... All this is happening. And you can see that regardless of whatever agreement they come to, something's got to give. You know, they've got to give to get. These people are in one way, shape, or form. They're going to try to save face. But in the end, there's going to be an uh, economic downturn again, either like 2008 or even worse than 2008. And that, I think, is the catalyst, not our safety, but the catalyst behind their want to take our guns away. Yeah. You know, there's a very disingenuous argument that's being presented right now in the media. And matter of fact, it creates quite a dichotomy. And I want people to think about this. You know, our government has told us since 9-11 that we're threatened. We're under a serious, severe threat of terrorism. That's what they tell us, okay? Even though we don't have anything happen every week, every day, every month, or every year. They try to tell us we're under this extreme threat of terrorism. Yet at this time, they want to disarm us. Seriously? Again, we've got a real dichotomy going on here. I mean, they're so worried about terrorism. They're so worried about terrorism in this country, folks, that they would go behind your backs. That's right, behind your backs, because this was never reported in the media. They went behind your backs 
and they passed NDAA 2012, something that would kill posse comitatus and allow military use against we the people. They're so worried about terrorism that they would pass H.R. 658 and put over 30,000 drones in the air over America to protect you because they're so worried about a terrorist threat in this country. And yet they're trying to take your guns away. I find that just a bit odd that that they think there is such a threat of terrorism and yet they're not going to allow our guns. Now, let me ask, why can't somebody go up to a school with a knife or a baseball bat, a knife like the guy in China did? He wounded like uh, 22 people. Or, or you go in with a baseball bat. I mean, one guy with a baseball bat swinging, man, I can club quite a few kids if I wanted to, and I'm sorry for that. You know, that's, but I'm, I'm just trying to get the point across. I mean, what weapon can't you create terror with? You know, why can't somebody threaten kids with a simple handgun? You know, they want the semi automatic rifles because, as you said, Joe, that's a threat to them. That's a threat to a tyrannical government. And look what they did in England, you know. They took the guns in England, and their crime went up. You know, why'd they do that in England? Was it because of a school shooting? It wasn't a school shooting. First thing they did was they took the handguns, and then I think the, the next thing was uh, fox hunting. But, you know, folks, if you want to see that, there's a great video. Matter of fact, a couple of them on the front page of Orion Talk Radio right now. Watch uh, Innocence Betrayed. That'll tell you the is a, is an hour long video on worldwide gun control. You know the effort to take the guns away from us, and then there's another one where they say England warns America. You want to watch both of those and pay very close attention. The Second Amendment is our constitutional right. It was given to us, and like the woman that John spoke about, write your congressman now. Write them now. Don't wait until farther into the week when they've already passed legislation because they are trying to hustle this through like they did the Patriot Act. If you're concerned about this, write your congressman now. And then when you watch this movie on uh, this short video on OrionTalkRadio.com, England Warns America, look at these people, how they mobilized and they got in the streets. But even they say they waited too long. Don't wait too long. Mobilize now because they're working fast to take these guns away. And again, this is a very disingenuous argument. If we have so much terrorism that is uh, that is threatening us right now, why take our guns and why take our right uh, our, our, our rights to protect ourselves? Right, the ability to protect yourself. John King, do you have something to add to that? Uh, yes, I do. There there are people out there that would suggest that nine eleven was an inside job. Now, the government wants to take and ban our guns. We know that. Now, let's, let's look at this at a, at a different angle. What price would they be willing to pay to get the people to turn in their guns? I mean, uh, the, the kid was on medication. Uh, the, the last few of these mass shootings, they were on medication. Last Even 14. some of them have – right. The, the, even some of them – of the uh, shooters say that they were under mind control. What price would the government go, or how far would the government go to coerce the American people to surrender their guns? What better way right. than to go into a school and wipe out the students and, and the teachers to get everybody all fired up at a hot-button topic because you don't want to protect the kids? You're an American. Well, here's, here's, here's something. I want to draw this parallel, too, because this is very similar to what's going on in the medical community. Treat the symptom, not the, pro not the problem. Treat the symptom, not the cause. Okay? And, and what, what's going on here is we have a symptom, and uh, one of the symptoms is uh, mass shootings. We, we have mass shootings that occur from time to time. Okay? The cause is not the gun. The cause is mental illness. The cause is psychiatric drugs and people that are on them and then off them and then on them and then off them or even on them and they experience side effects. And to date, there has not been a single study done to look into the cause and effect of taking these psychiatric drugs and the effect on the behavior. I mean, they put it out, oh, yes, well, this could be a potential side effect. But nobody's really measured it. There hasn't been any scientific studies done. You know, we can, uh, the EPA and, or the DEA or they, they, of course, they're in bed with Big Pharma. And all their studies, some of them are good. Some of them 
I think they could do a little better with their time, you know, with our tax dollars. And this is one thing that they can do. Actually look out and protect our citizens in that regard instead of um, just pad the pockets of big pharma. So we, my friends, have to stand up. It's like Michael Bednarik said, you know, it's too late. There's going to come a point in time when it's too late to stand up. You should have stood up before while you still had the chance because there's going to be a point where it's too late and we're rapidly approaching that point. Mm -hmm. You know, especially over the years, John, how many times have we said, you know, oh, gosh, man, this is it. This is it. But I'll tell you. I'm looking at it right now. Let's recap this real quick for as far as talking points are concerned. You know, we, we have this Newtown, Connecticut shooting. And now they're looking at d- doing some sort of gun grab, which at, at – remember, the only way it's successful is if you give them up. Then we have the fiscal cliff. The fiscal cliff involves many different things uh, – Tax increases, the expiration date of tax cuts, of payroll tax holidays, of insurance care, i.e., uh, or a.k.a. Obamacare, uh, and the tax increases associated with that, as well as some of the new laws that are being implemented. You know, uh, when you do this, you're going to have more people become unemployed. Uh, the things, and they'll become more desperate as more people will become unable to pay their mortgages and provide for their families. And even if the fiscal cliff is avoided, Look for a serious reduction in entitlements and benefits as it will be needed for a compromise. And, and, and again, I can't stress this enough. Tax increases, they're coming. Whether you like it or not, they're coming, which means less money when inflation is up, when the cost of living is up, and when wages are down. Timmy, you got any more to, any more to add? Well, you know, to the argument where they say we've got to save the kids, we've got to save the kids. I I want everybody to think about this. I live in the countryside, all right? And after we did that three-week expose in the Bush family, I actually had to chase somebody off my property. My son and I chased them into the woods. What the hell was someone doing out here in the countryside on my property walking up to my window? The point is they say protect the kids. I want to be able to protect my kids. You folks need to, to be able to protect your kids. If they take our guns away, how are you going to do that? Again, you know, you've got That's this right. dichotomy going on where they say protect the kids. Well, how are you going to protect your kids when something like this happens? Right. You know, Personal media, responsibility, right, Timmy? Exactly. And the media has been ex- very irresponsible throughout all of this because they have not mentioned the SSRI drug link, something that this program was the very first to do. You know, we were the first ones to actually make that link when this thing happened. And the media has, again, been tragically remiss and somehow bringing up the SSRI psychotropic drug link to mass killings in America because there have been many of them, folks. And they're linked on the front page of uh, Orion. So make sure you take a look and, and see what SSRI drugs do. And lastly, if they're so concerned about gun control and guns, why the hell did our government dump thousands thousands of guns into mexico with fast and furious and then cover the whole damn thing up guns that actually killed our own border agents that's right that's a very good point point. and let me re- let me remind people that are listening to this that may think that gun control is a good idea there are plenty of third world countries out there including first world countries like england where people have decided that they don't need guns anymore that or where despots have come in and taken the guns away You are free, my friends, to go to those countries where they don't have guns. In this country, we have God-given rights that no one and no legislation can take away. And I got news for you. There's nobody out there that can tell me what is in my best interest. No one. And you should feel the same way. You should feel insulted when somebody goes to you and tells you how to live and how to protect yourself and how to raise your kids and what food you should eat and what you should watch. I want you to remember that and make it perfectly crystal clear in your head that in this country, in the United States of America, we are all sovereign individuals. We are not subjects and we are not subject to any dictator. And all it takes is for you to stand up and be heard. That's it. And the house of cards will come down. The idea, my friends, is not to participate in the BS and to stand up for what's right. Sometimes that means having to grow a backbone. Sometimes that means having to expose yourself. 
But the more people that do that, the more cover, the more protected you are. You know, together, uh, you know, Timmy, the um, t- 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 we have to be unified in this. Yeah. And we and we cannot fall for the divide and conquer tactics. No, they come our way. And this is just this is another one, whether it be gun or anti gun, black or white, rich or poor. It doesn't matter. And, and yeah. you made a point, Joe, exactly what this is about. This is their push for the new world order. And we, folks, the United States, are the only country that stands in their way because we're heavily armed. You know, and everything they did with NDAA, you know, something that Dick Cheney was behind, he had no business being behind, and everything they did with H.R. 658, all points that they're working against us. And let me remind people real quick, you know who it was that initiated H.R. 658 to put 30,000 drones in the air over America? It would be none other than John D. Rockefeller the fourth, Mr. J. Rockefeller on the hill is how, what they call him. That's right. John King, 10 seconds. Go. Time to stand up, people, not to stand down. Amen to that, brother. Folks, that's the broadcast for tonight. Make sure you stay tuned for Down the Rabbit Hole with Popeye for a three-hour spectacular with his guest, Fritz Springmeier. Folks, we'll see you again tomorrow.